Apple is locked in a bitter dispute with the US government. Investigators want the tech giant to create software that would allow them to access an iPhone that belonged to a mass shooter. Apple refuses, saying this would compromise the security of millions of iPhone users and set a dangerous precedent. Joining me to discuss this are Renata Sampson from Big Brother Watch, a civil liberties pressure group, and Jonathan Ford, the FT's chief leader writer. Welcome. Renata, just how significant is this particular case? I mean, is it really, as some people are billing it, a test case for the future relationship between government and the tech industry? I think the speed with which this is moving and, and also the amount of other organisations that have now involved themselves in this case, there is certainly uh, 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 some element of it being a test case. But my point of view on this really is that this is a conversation that we need to be having. Technology is moving so fast um, that we're trying to play catch up to understand the moral implications of what, what needs to be done with regards to technology, but also with regards to the state and security and privacy of individuals that deals with good guys and bad guys. So uh, this is a conversation that is important, whether it is a test case, who can say? So you could imagine, um, despite the, the, institute, the body that you represent, you could imagine that there could be a discussion which would lead to an outcome where one says, actually, the FBI should be able to ask Apple I would to be, open a phone. I would be staggered if we come to an outcome that, that, that actually is workable at this point. It might work for a very short space of time, but technology is going to continue to move. Encryption is an issue. With the Internet of Things, we are all going to want to know that whatever we engage with, whatever data we share, uh, whether it's to our fridge, to our car, to our iPhone, uh, um, to our toothbrush even, that that data is secure. Now, that's going to be a very complicated uh, conversation to have and it's important that we're having it now but whether or not the conclusion right now is the solution forevermore I seriously doubt. In this case it's really I mean the, the FBI say it's a very narrow request to access you know after the event one phone uh, using a code that could then be destroyed so it's not something that could then yes they're saying spread that. like a cancer as Mr Cook from uh, Apple has said. They are saying that, um, but they're also saying that should a key be used, uh, that there have been other voices saying, well, we've got a whole load of phones that we'd happily use that key on. Uh, the point that, that Tim Cook is making is an important point that shouldn't just be dismissed. If you create a key to a piece of technology that is used by millions of people, it's not just going to be the FBI that have the opportunity to use that key. It's going to be rogue states, countries that we don't necessarily want to be handing keys out to our data. Uh, it, it's, it's so it's so much broader than we can ever really imagine, and uh, and that's the conversation that seems to be playing out. Jonathan, I mean, bring you in on this. I mean, it, it, there is a point there, isn't there? That you know, if you. Well, I think Renata has made a, a very, very powerful point about the need to define where the line lies and to protect people's data. Where I suppose I would diverge, I'd say this case doesn't really raise a lot of those questions. I think it's absolutely true that technology will move on and so forth, but I think. What is important in all this, and what one mustn't lose sight of, is in this rush to create these uh, technological devices, we should not accidentally, or indeed by design, and I think Tim Cook is in danger, perhaps mis mis mistakenly, of arguing for this, create a space in technology where the state, with a valid search warrant, as seems to be what is uh, the case here, does not have the power to go and look at something. We cannot create, a, inadvertently perhaps, a situation where there are devices which contain data which may be of real and valued interest to the security services or the police which they cannot access with, despite having every legal right, in my view, to do so. Uh, that's, 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 that's true. That's, that, 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 there is an element of that that is correct. Um, what's interesting <laughs> about this case is that they had the phone. They've been able to access quite a lot of data that was on the phone because that data was stored in the cloud. Yeah. That means that it wasn't encrypted. Yeah. And my understanding is, is that Apple have handed over everything that they're able to hand over. Um, there seems to be some issue with the fact that the FBI uh, uh, recommended that the password on the phone be changed. And and that has caused a, a problem with accessing the data that they now realise is lost. It's a little bit like going to a filing cabinet pre-technology and realising you haven't got the key. So taking a real sledgehammer to the, to the filing cabinet, maybe a blowtorch, and sort of burning the papers inside and then realising, oh, well, we've, we've lost our evidence. Um, that There has been a problem that the FBI haven't been that savvy well, about. If the, clearly, if the information is lost, it is lost. And if the FBI, by bungling their own investigation, have lost the uh, information that they seek, that's the their problem. But I think the question here, the, 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 the dispute, is whether Apple can do something which I think they acknowledge they can do, 
within, while safeguarding the more general principle of not handing out freely keys to all sorts of bad guys, um, if that is possible, which I think it is, then I think the in, in, it is still incumbent on them to cooperate in this case. And if indeed when they, they do access this device, they find that either the government cannot, because as I understand it, the government will, it will have to decrypt it itself. Secondly, whether the information is lost, then tough, tough luck. Thanks. I, we're, we're almost out of time, but I just wanted to squeeze in one last question to, to probably to you, Renata. And how, I mean, are we seeing a similar debate happening elsewhere? Because, I mean, there has been talk in, I mean, the UK, the, the Parliament is discussing a so-called Snoopers Charter. Is there some read across there in the issues that are being raised? Absolutely. The Investigatory Powers Bill, which is the bill that's just started passing through Parliament, uh, will engage companies under a warrant to hand over data that is encrypted in a readable format if they are able to do so. Now, with regards to Apple, Apple is saying they aren't able to do so. Now, it will be interesting to see if that indeed passes through. It's a very important bill. It's is a bill that's needed, but right now it's a bill that needs a lot of work doing it to make it uh, workable properly, long-term workable. But we don't want to find ourselves in a situation where British IT companies are being asked to install any technology that would allow the state access to our personal communications because, because people will just go elsewhere. We don't want to see the, IT, the IP bill damage UK, uh, UK tech and indeed the UK national economy. Renata Sampson, thank you and thank you Jonathan Ford and thank you for watching.